Oh, I don't know. Maybe in middle school or something. It's a, a theorem known as the intermediate value theorem. Can you see why that's a theorem about images of connected sets? What does the intermediate value theorem say? It says if you're dealing with a function on the interval going into R that's continuous, and let's suppose the image of the endpoints, there's a, there's a point in between the image of the endpoints, C lives between a, FA and FB, then I claim there exists an X in AB, in open AB, in fact, such that f of x equals c. That's the intermediate value theorem. And everybody's favorite picture of the intermediate value theorem is something like this. a, b, well, I'll draw it this way. a, b, and continuous function. The claim is between f of a and f of b, you give me a point c, and I will, I claim there is a point x that achieves the value c. Okay. Hopefully you can see why this is a consequence of the theorem about connected sets. Why? Help. And so, let's see. Maggie's looking at this and saying, oh, look, I have a connected interval, AB. Its image is connected. Suppose the image never hits C, but it hits F of A and F of B. Then the image would be disconnected. In fact, you could disconnect it using the part below C and the part above C. I claim that's a disconnection because the closure of a part above C can at most contain C. Can't intersect the other part and vice versa. So the proof is noticing that FAB is connected implies the image is connected. Uh, and um, uh, if C is, uh, but if C is not achieved, then C would disconnect F of AB. Then um, <coughs> C would disconnect. Okay, I'm, I'm saying this very informally. Formally, I would say take the interval from C to infinity and intersect it with f of a, b, and take the part below and intersect it with f of a, b, and that forms a disconnection. C would disconnect f of a, b. That's the, that's the basic idea. Okay. Look at this part and look at this part. All right. Okay. So um, one comment here, is the converse true? If a function has an intermediate value property, must it be continuous? If it's always the case that the conclusion holds, how many people say yes? How many people say no? OK, yeah. And you're probably wondering, you're probably thinking, well, I didn't state it as an if and only if, so it's probably not true. Converse is false. And I'll just show you an example. Um, here, f of x equals, um, let's let it be 0 at x equals 0. And let's let it be sine of 1 over x at uh, for x not 0. This has a special name. It's called the topologist sine curve. It's the source of a lot of um, 
headaches in analysis are in actually a source of a lot of interest, right? If you want to test things out, this is a good one. Here we go. So take the sine of 1 over x. It basically oscillates between 1 and minus 1, but it oscillates more and more as you get towards the origin. Right? Similarly, this does the same thing on this side. And then at 0, if you just tell it to, um, to be 0 right there, claim is this function is, is, is not continuous at 0. But it satisfies um, uh, an intermediate value property. OK. So one of the things I want to talk about next time is, is actually, since we've said a lot about continuity, uh, I want to start talking about disk, disk continuities, right? So what does it mean to be not continuous? I mean, so here's an example. Is it, is it possible for a function, we know what it means for a function to be continuous everywhere. Is it possible for a function to be discontinuous everywhere? There's a question. Is it possible for a function to be discontinuous everywhere? How many people say yes? How many people say no? Yeah, OK. Well, um, we're going to explore this question next time. So I'll let you, I'll let you ponder that. Stick around if you have questions about uh, the homework.